Okay, this chapter is over head and spinal injuries. I'm just really going to focus on head injuries because this chapter is so extensive that um, there's so much information it would take me too long to go through and explain every little bit. I'm just going to cover head injuries for right now and um, later on I may make some other videos about spinal injuries. So let's, uh, let's talk about head injuries real quick. Even minor ones, so even minor ones could potentially be life-threatening. So it, it's often hard to determine exactly how severe because the brain is encased with the skull and so we don't know how much damage has been done to the brain. Um, there are types. Let's list the different types of head injuries. And all of them, like I said earlier, could uh, result in some sort of brain injury. So you have scalp wounds. And there's a lot of blood supply, so these are going to bleed a lot. So if you've ever cut your head, you know that these bleed a lot. So a lot of bleeding, you're definitely going to have to try to control some of the bleeding. Um, even with scalp wounds, they could have some sort of concussion. So we'll talk about concussions in just a sec. So they could have a concussion. So just because it's bleeding and doesn't look very deep doesn't mean that they couldn't have something some more severe. I mean, it could be, you know, it could be as serious as a skull fracture. You may just see a scalp wound and on further investigation find out that the skull is indeed fractured. And definitely if the skull is fractured, you're probably going to have some sort of brain injury. But even without it being fractured, just with a scalp wound, they had to hit their head hard enough to cut it open. And oftentimes it may result at least into some sort of moderate um, brain injury. So a lot, of, a lot of these head injuries were mainly concerned with, yes, bleeding, but mainly concerned with brain injury. So how do we care for something like this? Well, we definitely want to control the bleeding. So we control bleeding. Once we can get that under control, we've got to be careful on how much pressure we put around the injury because we don't know if there's a suspected skull fracture. So we're going to kind of spread our pressure out when we're controlling the bleeding over a broad area, not right there in the localized site. So we want to kind of spread our pressure out so that if there is a skull fracture, we're not going to penetrate and, and damage the brain even more. So we don't want to penetrate the skull if there's a broken area because we don't know if it's open or closed. We don't know what if it is a skull fracture. Um, we, we just don't know if it's there or not. So we want to keep the head elevated. Head elevated. I want to keep that elevated. That's going to help control some of the bleeding. Head and shoulders should be ele elevated because if you lay somebody down, it's going to cause the pressure to go up and it's going to be really hard to get control of the bleeding. So ideally, we want to lay them up if we can. So that's how to care for a scalp wound. Let's scroll down here real quick. Let's talk about skull fractures since we mentioned those. That's the next type. So we have a skull fracture. And with a skull fracture, we're talking about a break. I know this is seems like common sense, but just in case you don't know, a break or a crack in the skull, in the cranium. So it could be opened or closed, just like I referred to earlier open or closed fracture of the skull and uh, we, again we want to be careful on how much pressure we apply if there's blood or cerebrospinal fluid so I'm just gonna 
abbreviate that so I don't have to spell it all out. Coming out of their ears or nose. Yes, you want to try to get control of it, but you don't want to stop it completely because that could cause pressure to build up. And the skull can't flex, and so it's real easy for the brain to get damaged. So let's say here's the skull right here. So there's our skull. Let's see if I can draw this out a little bit. It's kind of hard to draw with these pins. I'm just going to draw the skull for just a sec. So there's our skull. We have our brain in here. We've got the two hemispheres of the brain. It's kind of all wrinkly. All the different folds in the brain. Well, there's not a lot of room in there. So if you get any kind of swelling, it can't go anywhere. And so it does a lot of damage to these blood vessels and nerves out here on, on the extremities of the brain. And that's really one of the most important parts of the brain. So you want to be careful. Um, if there's any fluid coming out, we, we still want to get control of the blood, and there's this cost benefits here, but we don't want to completely stop it where it backs up and the pressure builds up in the brain. So you got to be careful with that. Um, let's also talk about how to recognize when somebody has some sort of um, brain injury or skull fracture. Actually, skull fracture. Let's deal with skull fracture first. You're going to have pain, of course. And this could happen with a scalp wound or a skull fracture. So you're going to get some of these applied to both going to get some deformity. And again, this can happen even with, just because you have deformity doesn't necessarily mean you have a skull fracture. You could have just a scalp wound where the skin's all folded up, so you really need to do a little bit more investigation to see why the deformity is there. But be careful. Don't be too invasive with your investigation. Could have bleeding from the ears. Now, if you get bleeding from the ears, Probably not just a scalp wound, okay? So if you get bleeding or um, cerebral spinal fluid um, coming out of the ears, that's an indication that we've got some sort of skull fracture and most likely some sort of brain injury. And to care for this, actually we'll get to that in just a little bit. Some of the care is the same for even brain injuries. So let's go ahead and go to brain injuries first. So brain injuries. You could have all three of these. In fact, most likely you will, but you could have a scalp wound along with skull fracture, which leads to a brain injury. So these are not independent of one another. You could have all three. Um, a lot of times brain injuries occur because of vehicle crashes. These are the most common. So vehicle crashes are some of the most common along with falls, especially the young children. When that happens, you're going to have somebody who's most likely confused as a result of the brain injury. So, um, and there's a lot of different types of brain injuries. We'll talk about those in just a second. I just want to show you some of the, or talk to you about some of the symptoms. So you're going to have somebody who's confused a lot of times because they have some, they're concussed. They have some sort of concussion, which can be a moderate brain injury. Sometimes it can be a severe, depending on how. Um, the level of concussion. Uh, many brain injuries are life-threatening. So anytime you suspect a brain injury, we want to get care on its way. The main thing we're worried about with a brain injury is swelling. Because the brain has nowhere else to go and it's going to damage the outermost parts of the brain, which are some of the most vital areas. So, because it gets compressed inside the skull. And it can damage nerves. And here's the big problem, is nerves don't regenerate. And if they can't regenerate, then they won't be, they won't be able to repair. So, um, a lot of brain injuries are caused by deceleration injuries.
and what this occurs to is normally happens in falls or, or vehicle crashes. This reason I put it right across from there. Let's just say this is the cranium here. And so when you rapidly slow down, we have the brain in here. It sloshes forward, depending on which way you slow down. So let's say we just got in a car crash. So our ca car is going this way. It just makes a head-on collision. Our body's still trying to go. So what happens is the brain, the frontal lobe hits here, and then it bounces back and bounces back and forth inside the skull. So it does a lot of damage to the front and back portion of the brain, and then you're likely to get swelling. This also happens in falls, where if you fall, so this part, let's say we hit the back of our head on the fall, the back part's going to hit first, but it's going to kind of bounce around in there and do damage to the brain. So that's what I'm referring to when I talk about deceleration injuries. Some of the signs, somebody with a, a brain injury, of course headache. It's happened to me before. I had a concussion, had really bad headache, really bad. So um, nausea, vomiting, may have drowsiness. may have heard of not letting somebody go to sleep when they had a head injury because they may not wake up. Well, you can let them go to sleep, but don't let them sleep more than two hours. Um, you definitely want to check on them and wake them up every two hours and uh, just to check to see how they're doing because if the brain starts to swell while they're asleep, then you may not know about it because you won't be able to read the symptoms. So you, you want to check on them. Um, seizure, they may have seizures especially in somebody that's never had a seizure before. Definitely going to have mobility problems. I don't know if you've ever watched any kind of like mixed martial arts fights when somebody gets hit really hard in the jaw or in the head and their legs kind of go out from under them. Well, that's ex exactly what they'll experience. Some sort of mobility issues where they can't get their limbs to work right and so they have all sorts of balance issues. So let's go into the types of brain injuries real quick. This is going to be fast because I think I'm running out of time. You got a concussion. We know what that is. Concussion, this is be considered mild traumatic. These are all traumatic brain injuries I'm talking about. And you've got a contusion. And so that's where the brain actually gets bruised. So that's a bruised brain where it's bounced back and forth in the skull and it's, or you've taken a direct hit and so and then you have acquired brain injuries and these let me finish spelling it here acquired brain injuries and these are ones that develop after birth and they're not due to an injury so these develop after birth and they don't relate to an injury. So anyway, that's, I think I'm just about out of time here. So I uh, just covered brain injuries. There's a lot more to this chapter, a lot about spinal injuries, injuries to the eye and so forth. So go through and read that. Um, but this will give you a good breakdown, general overview of head injuries um, being the care for skull, um, scalp, and brain injuries. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.